Alrighty, so uh, on to our next uh, our next speaker, um, which is Edef. Uh, and on her behalf, I'd like uh, to uh, ask you to not uh, take pictures uh, of her and and, uh, and treat them in the world. Uh, and also, um, uh, I'd like you to uh, um, uh, to pay note that uh, you should refer to her uh, as she and her. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for that. Um, and apart from that, um, she is uh, she's here today to talk uh, to us about uh, NixOps. It's uh, the limitation that she has run into uh, using it, and uh, the ways that she has found uh, to do things better. Right? Off we go. Or Uh, I'm not quite going to talk about NixOps in terms of uh, how I've worked around it, but uh, for starters, uh, what do I actually do? I run a small platform as a service company called Mutable. We put, uh, we put the cloud experience in places where you wouldn't otherwise get them in what everyone's now calling edge cloud. Uh, but that means we have to manage a lot of systems in a lot of places uh, across diverse infrastructure, and the cloud never sleeps. So we got to be able to patch stuff up while it's running. Uh, we can't really have non-atomic updates to things because that's an operational nightmare. Uh, so somewhere around two years ago, we switched everything over to NixOS. Um, We use in, immutable infrastructure practices to build everything outside the compute, but we have a constantly evolving stack, so we have to manage those as well. Um, we try to solve problems at the lowest layer it makes sense for, so we have to integrate custom patches to all kinds of software, uh, kernel patches, kernel modules. Um, we have to integrate our system like as closely uh, or at least our own, we have to integrate our own software as closely with everything else as third-party software that we pull in, like we use console and things like that. Uh, we use a heavily modified Docker currently, but that's not such a huge problem if we're on NixOS. We run on diverse underlying infrastructure. We run on EC2. Uh, we're moving our control plane to Google Compute currently, um, but most of our targets are bare metal provided by uh, telcos and places like that. So, and we have a lot of like machines we're deploying to, so we can't have like something where we're doing some like significant amount of per machine work. Um, so I was aiming to deploy our compute nodes, which uh, run basically a Docker daemon, a bunch of magic of ours, and our own services, because our system runs on itself. Uh, so NixOps was my first choice when, like, OK, I have to deploy a bunch of machines with Nix. But NixOps is neat if you're deploying like a couple dozen machines uh it has its like slightly more pet than cattle approach to deployment where individual machines are things you're aware of um it sets networking to host name for each machine so each machine already has a unique configuration uh it sets ETC hosts to contain every other machine, so every time you add a single machine or remove one, you're touching every machine you already have. You can like do networking to extra hosts, uh, is make force empty string, that works out. Um, but really what I want to do is always deploy a one size fits all image to every single machine of a certain type, and then mutate it after the fact because we have things like custom kernels. Uh, NixOps likes to deploy um, the pre-built AMIs 
uh, that get built with every Nixos release, we have to reboot those right away if we deploy them. Uh, and there's no real automation for that. Uh, that could be done by like matching booted system to current system, etc. But it's not ideal. We also on the, our bare metal target Swan ZFS support. There isn't much of that, but that was ostensibly patchable. Then there's support for things beyond raw compute. Um, so on AWS and Google Cloud, that's things like security groups, uh, storage buckets. There is some support for those, but um, it's not very comprehensive. But the real kicker was not being able to use it in a distributed fashion easily. Um, we have a variety of people deploying. We're working on automating, deploying our entire stack, but also just uh, we can't have that state exist on a single machine. Everything about our system is designed to account for the failure of. So, in addition to that, we want to target a lot of places, and Nixops has been slow to integrate targets. We are not super up for hacking on a Python code base. Um, so what we ended up doing was handling the raw compute resources with Nixops um, with a couple workarounds for uh, the issues we covered, uh, a bunch of bash scripts around it to take care of things like uh, adding a number of new machines to the cluster. Um, and we ended up covering the Uh, we ended up running into uh, the uh, managing of non-compute infrastructure. We used Terraform for that in the past already. Um, and Terraform is a tool for managing immutable infrastructure generally built from uh, like pre-built images so you the normal approach when you use Terraform and like the entire HashiCorp stack is you pre-build uh, AMIs running like Debian or whatever and you apt get and do horrible things and all that to make your thing work and you bake that into an image and forget about all the horrible things involved in making it. And if you ever want to change the running machine, you throw it away and replace it with a new one. Which, sure, but in our case, we have uh, customer containers running on those machines, and we do need to actually do hot fixes from time to time. Some of them are physical machines, so we can't just throw them away. Um, but Terraform has a lot of good sides to it. Uh, it has great operator control. Ahead of like deploying a change, you can run Terraform plan, which will tell you like, hey, we're recreating this resource because it uh, because it changed in a way that we can't do at runtime. Um, it has a good story for using it in a distributed fashion. You can tell it to back its state store with um, etcd or an S3 bucket, though that one's not super clean. But there are a variety of options that mean everyone can just run Terraform on their laptop and not clash with anyone else. Uh, it has rather pleasant integration with other tools, so I ended up using them together. Um, oops, that is the wrong screen. So that is not. <laughs> Terraform looks like Terraform looks like this. Uh, basically, you have a resource abstraction, um, and you have outputs, which is all that matters to the next layer, really. So I just do some horrible things and poke inside its state files, 
and get all of those bits out. Uh, and I use that to deploy everything uh, that isn't compute uh, that isn't like actual machines. Uh, I used this next expression from inside my nixops uh, config, and then everything works with that. It's a little manual, but it's fairly workable. Um, but we still have the issue of like, when we're using nextops, we're doing a next copy closure to every machine. Um, there's a configuration that differs per machine by default. Uh, I maybe there's something I'm missing, but I haven't seen any like significant integration with like managing a binary cache. Um, but ultimately, what NixOps boils down to is kind of a fancy way of doing NixOS rebuild switch dash dash target host. And that's all we're really using it for at this point. So what I'd like to do and what I'm building is uh, we have excellent support for building disk images in Nix packages, well, in NixOS. Um, so I build a single disk image per node type um, and use that to boot fresh nodes when I'm like powering up new machines or just uh, like any time I'm running a machine with a clean disk. Uh, so that gets turned into uh, AMIs for EC2, Google Compute, like machine images, and for bare metal, a netboot image that we boot over. Do not necessarily boot over PXE, but the netboot builder builds your entire everything into the init ramifest, so that's quite convenient. Um, once we have those machines up, we want to be able to change them without shutting them down. So every th system image we build um, gets pushed to a binary cache. Uh, and then we just connect to the machines and tell them to run that. Um, so for that, we, in theory, have to interface with a bunch of Nix bits. Uh, there wasn't a convenient Google, uh, a Google Cloud Storage uh, C++ SDK. There's a deprecated one and one that doesn't have the right APIs. That's Google's thing, I guess. Uh, so I decided to, uh, most of our stack is Go. Um, and I'd have to bind Go to the C++ stuff if I wanted to really integrate it closely with our tools. That was not something I was excited about. So I ended up implementing most of the Nix store protocol and building myself something that um, roughly re-implements Nix push, but you can easily back it with arbitrary stores without having to write C++. Um, and something that pushes images uh, builds an image using the uh, the make disk image stuff uh, takes care of the per provider specific things. Um, so now we have binary caches. Um, and like m images to boot machines from. Uh, I actually.
so I have this little thingy called nib, which takes like uh, roughly any anything you can execute commands on, and like will take care of if you give it an extor path for a system of invoking that right. Um, it's a ton of code because Go is terrible, but it's pretty easy to use. Um, I have a little. It's roughly equivalent to a programmatic um, uh, Nixos rebuild switch dash dash closure dash dash target host. Uh, so the binary like has you exposes the built-in support for um, using uh, goes SSH, uh, doing it on a local machine, of course. Um, um, it also supports uh, NixOS in an Illumos zone because Visanto and I at some point played around with that. Um, uh, our stack on top of all this is a bunch of Go services running in Docker. Um, mm, those get stuffed into a Docker container with this little thing called next to Docker. Um, mostly built because the Docker tools in Next packages are very, very flexible, but uh, aren't very fast. This just basically sticks a tarball, like takes a closure, sticks it in a Docker image tarball, uh, does the minimal work necessary for that. Our service derivations are built with uh, something called GoX, which uh, I would very much appreciate the uh, Nix and Nix stuff for, um, because we use import from derivation to do um, dependency discovery and build every Go package as an individual Nix derivation which I'm not sure if it's a waste of time yet, but uh, it's been working for a good two years now. So I think that it's all right. Um, and sort of my future plans are like to like release that and make it into a polished thing. Um, and for deploying our uh, clusters, we are like working on more stuff that like has more awareness of cluster state, uh, is aware of the subsystems it's deploying. Um, like we currently deploy Raft clusters like etcd and console with Nixops, and we there's sort of the automatic joining stuff to build a cluster, um, like a logical cluster out of that at the layer of that software. That doesn't work out quite as well as having like your deployment software be aware of um, what it is deploying and what its state is. In general, we want like a more programmatic approach to it. Um, we specifically want it to work in a distributed fashion. So there's no state that's on any single machine um, and at some level, we need a stateful approach because we can't reboot running stuff freely. So I'm sort of working on a plan where we I look at booted system versus current system, figure out whether I can upgrade uh, the system on a given machine without like losing the ability to load kernel modules. Um, and I'm still working on like a plan for doing CI for all this, but I'm hoping that's easy enough. 
and sort of our long-term plans are probably sort of um, changing how we use Nix2S because systemd has been giving us a lot of problems in container context. So I've been playing with building um, something on top of the S6 stack, which is an approach to service supervision that um, is a little more Unix-y. Um, and I hope we'll be very nice with Nix. But uh, yeah, I think that was most of what I wanted to talk about. I'd have had more demos, but uh, my laptop SATA cable failed. So yeah, questions time, I guess. All righty. Ah. <laughs> uh, at the end, you have mentioned that uh, you're trying to move NixOS to a different process provision mechanism. Uh, is it right? Or like do experiment in this area? Uh, yeah, I am experimenting with that because um, uh, like system these job scheduling system is like very surprising at times and mm -hmm. duplicates a lot of like what we do on the NixOS modules end of things. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the other one you're trying to use? Um, so S6 is, S6. Um, it is the Scarnet service supervision suite. <laughs> um, it's one of the many like DJBware things that like solve this in a similar way. Uh, it's very worth reading about and I recommend digging in. I can't really give like a full overview of it. More questions? Nope. Then uh, thank you again very much for your talk, Edith. Thank you. Um, so next up, again, 30 minutes of...